With AI, we can make amazing things fast. Here I asked it to make this 3JS carousel where the images are bending and warping, but to rebuild this all in Webflow, we'd had to manually recreate all of our HTML elements, all of our CSS, and this can be kind of tedious to do. This is why I've created the HTML to Webflow converter from modin.club. So with this, I can just copy this uh, project here, and then I can paste it into this tool. Now, sometimes Club will give you separate CSS and JavaScript files, in which case we'd paste it into these tabs. But here, all of the JavaScript and styles are all within the HTML. So then I would just click convert, it would add in those elements, and now it's copied to my clipboard. So I can just paste it here into Webflow. And we'll notice things like these button elements here have their hover stylings and everything set natively here. Um, we can see all of their attributes that are required to make this work or set here. And if we look at things like these text elements, we can dial in the font sizes and all of the styling is all set here. And we'll notice it even created things like the canvas element here with the correct IDs and stuff to render the 3JS. And inside our embed here, it imported the 3JS library, it added all of the JavaScript, and in the CSS, it's going to add things that Webflow can't style natively. So we can't style by ID natively or by certain tags. So I'll show you some prompts to uh, reduce the amount of styling that ends up in the embed. But uh, here we'll go ahead and preview it and we have this working here. We can pause it. We can have less bend on the, it. We can speed it up or slow it down. Um, so we have this kind of working here. Uh, let's look at another example. Um, so if we want to just take in this uh, SAS navigation here. So what I'll do is I'll just copy it over all of the HTML, CSS and everything's in there. And I'll just go ahead and run it through the tool and convert. And so now I can just paste it in here and we'll notice we have uh, these elements. So I have the link, I have the right data attributes needed to make this all work. Uh, we have these text elements and stuff and all of the styling um, is set here that we can set. So things like our drop shadows and um, our clip uh, here and all of that is set. Um, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and look at the JS. So all of that is in here. And if we take a look at the CSS, so we have a lot of descendant selectors, like only style this element when it's inside of another element. That's something Webflow doesn't support natively at the moment. If there's any uh, sort of breakpoints that don't line up with Webflow's pixel breakpoints, it's going to add it inside an embed. But anything that is kind of close to Webflow's uh, breakpoints, it will actually set with the Webflow breakpoints themselves. So if we take a look at this, the style is applied here. Um, so we can kind of prompt how we want that to work. Um, but now that we have that set, I'll just go ahead and preview it and we have this kind of drop down uh, all set up with the SNAF. Um, so let's take a look at how we can get a little bit more control over this. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and paste in uh, this prompt. Let me copy it here. Um, so I'm saying write vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We don't want it using like SCSS or uh, React or anything like that. Uh, using rim units instead of pixels, BEM style class naming. So this is going to help it work a little bit better with Webflow. Um, not targeting IDs or tags, no descendant selectors, simple selectors, avoid heavy utility usage. Um, so little prompts like that. You can even prompt it. You can paste in a list of all your CSS variables if you want it to use those. Uh, you can tell it to use Webflow breakpoints or to use um, like container queries or anything like that. And so now I'll just upload the design of what I want it to create. And so let's just run it through and we'll see what it comes back with. So it created three files here. It looks like we have our HTML here that I'll copy and I'll just paste over into the tool. Then we're going to go ahead and grab the CSS here. We'll copy that and we'll paste that over. And then we're going to grab our JavaScript here. We'll copy that right there and just paste that in here. And then we can just convert it. And then we can just go ahead and paste that into Webflow. And honestly, this is spot on. Like it looks really good. Um, we have, looks like all of our styling set here. It did decide to use some variables here. Those are probably in the embed. So we can move those over to the variable panel or we could just tell it from the start what our variable names are and let it use those. Um, but that is looking pretty good there. We have this JavaScript that's just left over from Claude when the, the JavaScript was in a separate file. We can just delete that because um, it moved all of our JavaScript into here. So that's looking good. 
Um, and then it looks like, let's see, all of our responsive changes and stuff are set here in the style panel. I guess the breakpoints were close enough to Webflow breakpoints there. Um, and then we can just see, uh, looks like the JavaScript, um, looks like it's adding like an active class on click of icons. So maybe that's like uh, some kind of tab-like feature or something um, that it added there. Some nice little hover states and stuff. Um, but I could continue to refine it, but already this is a great starting point, not having to type out all of the nav links and get all of the structure in place. I can just start with accessible tags and things in place um, as a great starting point instead of building completely from scratch. I'm going to try one more. This is a looping slider design I created a while back. Uh, let's just see what it can come back with. So for this one, it nailed the functionality on the first try. I did have to go back and forth on the design a little bit, but this is really impressive. It added some nice little bounce that wasn't in my original clonable. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and just copy this code and let's just paste it into the converter. And this is a lot of stuff that it's going to be adding in here. Let's just convert that over and let's paste it into Webflow. And wow, so there's actually some images in it too. Um, so yeah, this uh, came through really nicely. So we have all of these elements here. We have the cards here. Uh, our JavaScript is in here. And it looks like the styling is really minimal thanks to that prompt. There wasn't really a ton that had to be, do, uh, be done uh, custom CSS-wise. Um, but so now if we just run it, we have this nice bounce going on. And that looks pretty great for these cards. Um, so that's an overview of how to use the HTML to Webflow tool for Modin.club. I hope this helps you out when building out your Webflow sites.